Hojicha, Japanese roasted tea. There is a version made with stems and one made with leaves. Which one tastes better? Let's find out. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanno Shan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. Today I have two roasted tea, two hojicha, from the same shop in Kyoto, but they are slightly different because one of them is made with only stems and the other one is made with some stems but also quite a bit of leaves. And we want to find out what's the difference in taste because to my surprise and maybe also to yours, the one with stems actually costs a little bit more. Not much more than the other one, about 10-15% more, but still you would expect that the tea made only with stems is actually cheaper. In particular, if the hojicha comes actually from uh, Uji, because in Uji they tend to have quite high quality tea. So this hojicha is not a bancha, is actually a high grade sencha. And with the high grade sencha, they use the leaves instead of doing a high grade sencha, just to do a hojicha. And uh, well, for the case of the stems, uh, the name of the tea is actually karigane. So it's a hojicha karigane. Karigane is how in the Kyoto area people refer to kukicha, so stem tea. All right, now that we have uh, an introduction about the two tea, first of all, let's have a look at the leaves. How do I do? Let's make some room here and let's see how they look like. This one is the classic, uh, or actually less classic, but it's a hojicha made also with uh, leaves. So you see that there are some stems in here. Here is one, but uh, there is also a substantial amount of of leaves and here we have the one that uh, should be made with uh, stems only yeah well you can tell there is way more stems in here the difference is not uh, major like you have also some tiny bit of leaves here but here the bit of leaves are a little bit larger and they are definitely more. In terms of roasting they have a similar roasting you know oji cha can be very lightly roasted and it can be heavily roasted when it's heavily roasted the color is really dark brown you don't see any shade of green in the leaves or in the stems while here you definitely still can see a little bit of greenish in it. This one seems a tiny bit darker actually, but I think is because of the leaves, because the leaves, roasted leaves, get uh, um, faster, darker color. All right, so um, I will wait now four grams of each, put it in this uh, tea tester mug, 100 milliliters, and then we start with the taste. I ended up using actually only three grams of leaves because by looking at the quantity I just thought uh, it's more appropriate. All right, one. I have a timer of my kettle, quite convenient. You can really already very clearly smell the roasting in the air. And I personally prefer when the roasting is not too excessive because otherwise you just taste roasting while you still want really to taste uh, the leaves, right? Otherwise, why did you roast the tea? Few more moments. I think I'll do um, about a minute. I used the uh, 73 degrees water. Yeah, let's do about a minute and then let's see how it is. 
I could do it also longer, but I prefer to start uh, on the... Well, actually, I ended up doing more, 100 seconds, so 1 minute 40. Well, actually, you know, the color of the two is nearly identical. Actually, on this side, maybe a tiny bit darker, but you know, it's so minor that it's very difficult to say. It's interesting because actually the leaves were darker. So I start with, uh, with this one here. It's starting getting colder these days and that's just the perfect tea. You know, it is in between season. Mm. It's buttery. Mm. Oh yeah. I wasn't expecting um, such a big difference, actually. Mm. I'm confused. Hmm. So the. Uh, the, the tea with the stem, with the stems is just thicker, it's, it's really thicker and already this one I had, you know, a buttery feeling, so not really watery, but this one is in, more intense, there is more, more umami in it. Do another round to see how also they hold over time. Starting the timer because I keep on forgetting, especially when I am in front of the camera. So, yeah, let's. This like roasted beans. Mm. It's so thick. It really coats the mouth and. Um, Mm, and stays there. It's like even when you swallow the tea, you still feel uh, your mouth and in particular the tip of your tongue uh, coated. Mm. And it's interesting because actually here it seems like the roasting is more pronounced, but maybe it's not because the roasting is more pronounced so much, but more because uh, the result a lack of anything else. It's like the leaves actually don't taste as much as the stems and uh, um, I wonder why. Well, the, the stems are farther down in the plant so you have less sunlight that hits the, plant, the, the stems than the leaves so that can certainly have an influence. Mm. I would expect that having more an influence on the on the bitterness of the leaves, expecting the the one hit by the sun being more bitter, but here is not the case, unless I oversteep like I'm doing now for more than two minutes. So let's see how that goes. It's, yeah, it's 70 degrees, but it's also two and a half minutes, so... Mm. 
well, very consistent color. <laughs> it's, uh, it's nearly identical, actually. It really depends on which side you, from which perspective you look at the leaves. So, um, I'll go, as usual, the other way around. I start with the roasted one, uh, sorry, with the stems. Change it quite a bit. The roasting is less intense, surprisingly, because uh, I, I put it in, I, I soak it in water for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And it's still very intense, but the roasting is lighter. Yeah, and these, um, like uh, between the two, um, I would have no doubt to go for the stem one. No doubt. It's just 10-15% uh, more expensive, so nearly nothing actually. And um, it just gives me an overall more satisfactory feeling. It's, it's more complex, it's more complete. Uh, it has this thickness in your mouth that uh, um, you almost feel like you want to chew on it. And this one has um, an algae taste, there is a little bit of algae. Mm. Yeah, it's more vegetal. Mm. Not necessarily bad though, yeah? More vegetal, more algae and lighter. Mm. Yeah, that's how it is. Now I was looking at the leaves, which one were darker. Yeah, these are, the leaves are a little bit darker, but um, yeah. All in all, I think uh, I don't need to taste it any farther. That's, uh, that's how it is. It's the first time I do a side-by-side -side comparison, actually, of two hoji cha that in roastiness are very close to each other, but one has more abundance of uh, stems, the other one is more abundance of leaves. I say they all come most likely from the same garden, certainly from the same area, from Uji. And Uji is a small, uh, um, yeah, it's a small production area, although it's famous, just uh, southeast of uh, Kyoto. And uh, uh, yeah, if uh, in the future, we will source uh, hojicha from uh, these uh, suppliers. I think I'll definitely go for the stem variation. That, that's for sure. But I didn't do that now. This time I was just visiting there and I just bought a big uh, 200 gram bag for me on one and on the other. I have here half a kilo. Let's see how long he will take to drink it. There are a lot of cold days just ahead of me. So this will help. All right, guys, I hope uh, you have enjoyed this comparison. If you have also more, what was that? If you have more um, experience with uh, this side of comparison, maybe it's the kettle popping, then uh, please uh, comment, yeah, comment, uh, add some comments below so that we all know more about the different type of oji cha or maybe you have some other types of comparison where you have also tasted the more greener the greener one like this type less roasted or the more roasted don't know what is this popping and um and you can tell me which one do you like the best all right i'll see you next week most probably with another video and uh, till then, stay tuned and keep on drinking good tea. Bye, guys.